Hey guys, this is Ryan Johnsmus. I'm a dating and relationship guru, and I'm going to be discussing my method on life. My method is called Real Game. Real Game, as opposed to fake bullshit game that a lot of uh, pickup gurus teach you in the community. Now, they have a lot of great stuff in the community. You guys are probably really familiar with the uh, ACS model. Attract, comfort, seduction. Right? We've all, as PUAs, seen that part of the model. Okay? We've got... Uh, Starting here with the attraction phase, comfort, and seduction. I think these are great, okay? I think these, uh, this part of the method is sound. Attracting a woman, building comfort with her, and uh, if you do so correctly and uh, systematically demonstrate your value as a man, you know, in the attraction phase, build comfort, trust, connection, commonality with the woman, then she will ultimately want to seduce you. You know, it's brilliant. It's just that there are some pieces that are missing. And I'm going to discuss those here. We've got the attraction phase, comfort. And seduction. But what happens when we have a man who is not yet attractive? Well, he can't really just start an attraction. If a guy comes up who's, you know, good looking, who has a good job, who dresses well, you know, then yes, he can start here and he may have some uh, qualities of attractiveness to a woman. He can then approach her and open, by the way, for you guys who don't know what this is, this model, these three phases are actually broken down into three phases within themselves, thus giving us nine stages, nine levels of this game. Okay, starting in A1, A2, A3, C1, C2, C3, and S1, S2, S3. A1 being the open phase. This is the phase where I open the set. I go up and I talk to the girl. Hi. That could just a, just a simple hello thus puts me in the beginning of A1. Okay? A2 is now male to female attract. This is where I as a man demonstrate higher value to the woman, thus triggering the attraction circuitry within her brain. Therefore, creating attraction and that's done by a series of routines. We're not going to get into any technical things in this lecture. I more want to discuss with you my method, which is basically the key components of, uh, that we're missing in this model. Okay? Uh, so you, you systematically display and uh, you do certain things to trigger attraction so the woman becomes attracted to you. Okay? And once she's attracted to you, you then move into the A3 phase, which is uh, female to male attract. This is where, this is a qualification phase. This is where the woman is now attracted to you, and then as a man of higher value, you will then qualify the woman, letting her know why, why you like her, other than her beauty. For example, uh, you find out she's a nurse, and you go, wow, that's interesting that you're a nurse. Uh, when I first met you, I thought you were just one of these you know, these typical club girls. But now that I've got to uh, to to get to know you a little better, there's a lot more to you than meet the eye. You, you, you get what I'm saying right there? So you qualify the woman and you make her feel uh, validated more as a person rather than an object. When that happens, that's uh, usually the phase where a number exchange will take place, contact information at Facebook, Instagram, however 
you know, phone, it's 2016 now, so getting a phone number, that's, that's pretty old school. You know, uh, me personally, even Facebook is, is getting kind of old. I'd rather get a girl's kick, I'd rather get uh, her Instagram, and then I can DM her. You know, the, the way that humans are communicating is, is much different than it was, say, in 2009, you know. Uh, we're just living in a different time, but uh, we still uh, are human courtship, our, our mating ritual, so to speak, is is still pretty much the same, just there's a, a few different dynamics that are going on here. Anyway, you move into then C1. Okay, this is a, this is comfort. This is a, say I met the girl on a dance floor, and then I moved her over to, uh, to sit down in an isolation location, maybe the, the booth nearby, or maybe we just uh, went over to the bar to have a drink, and we, we're now sitting down having a real conversation. You know, I'm getting to know her as a person. You know, what are you, what are you passionate about? Do you have any brothers or sisters? That's this, this quarter, sort of talk, okay? Uh, after C1, we move into C2. This is a, a connection phase. This is where we start really uh, understanding each other. And we're, we're fine. she finds out I, I'm a musician. She finds out uh, different things about me. And then there's a connection because maybe she plays guitar too or something there's some kind of just connection that's that's kind of strengthening our bond uh at that point uh this is usually where the first kiss will happen in a uh, in a interaction we then move into c3 which is intimacy okay and that's where we're really starting to build this bond between us there's something serendipitous about this this interaction this is this is where usually uh uh, heavy making out, French kissing will start to occur. Okay, there'll be more touching, more dancing, more just overall the this as this comfort phase is completed, you're just gonna feel just at home, you know, around each other. Uh, at that point, you then want to move into the seduction phase. S1 was gonna be uh, foreplay. This is where uh, you might move into. Uh, a full isolation. This is where you uh, get the girl back into your living room, you know, for a Netflix and chill type of deal. This is where, uh, you know, maybe kissing on the neck, heavy, heavy, heavy petting. That type of uh, situation is going to happen here, right here. S two. You may encounter what's called LMR, last minute resistance. That's where, uh, that's where the girl might be like, you know, I, I don't usually do this, and. If you can overcome that LMR, like, uh, you know what, I don't either. And then you continue, and you keep kissing her, and uh, ultimately, uh, you guys get naked. Sex happens right here in S3, and then the model stops, okay? And in the seduction community, this is it. They're just playing these nine levels, and... What's happened is the, these gurus have failed to, to inform you that there is a beginning, there's, there are steps before this to in turn become attractive before you could even go into the attract phase. And after you have sex with a girl, after let's say this time frame has happened between, on average, between four and 10 hours of accumulated time, okay? Sex can occur in as, middle, as little as, as five minutes. Uh, I've done that myself. We have, have students that have, have uh, fully closed girls on the dance floor, opening them, uh, and having sex with them within seven to ten minutes. Okay, that's... Uh, it, you don't have to set up a date. You don't have to go up to a girl, get a phone number, ask her out for coffee, spend an hour having coffee, talking to her on the phone. Uh, and then ultimately, you know, doing a Netflix and chill kind of thing and then having sex in the bedroom, you know, it's Las Vegas. Sex in a toilet happens all the time. You meet a girl uh, on the dance floor, the next thing, you're finger banging her at the bar, you're, uh, you know, you, you, you whip your dick out and you fuck her right there on the little, uh, what is that called? It's the place where the, the bartender will set the drinks for the, for the cocktail waitress. You can set a girl right there, pull your shit out, put a condom on, and uh, you can have a full close within seven to ten minutes. Okay, it happens all the time. Uh, the girls come here, you know, they want to get laid. They're looking for 
a high value man who can uh, who can approach them fast, escalate the, the situation, and uh, pull them off to the uh, to the women's restroom. You know, uh, sex in the toilet happens all the time. Just maybe not to uh, to you guys. You know, not yet, anyways. But uh, what's happening here is they say that this is the end of the end of the game. Game over. You have sex with the girl, but then what happens next? Okay, what happens? What happens after this? Uh, and uh, and we're going to get into uh, the missing pieces right now. First of all, I want to talk about what happens before attraction. Okay, let's say I got this uh, an average an average Joe. He's uh, he's a little out of shape. You know, he doesn't have the best job. He he may might still live at home. You know, he just may not be living the type of lifestyle that a attractive woman would would be attracted to does that make sense so what i've what i've noticed is there's a phase right here and i like to call that phase lifestyle mastery i'm going to put lifestyle mastery right here lm for short This is the phase where you want to tighten up your game, where you want to become the type of man who would naturally attract the type of girl that you want. This is the phase where if you're a little out of shape, you know, before you ever open, this could be six months, this could be two years before you ever even talk to a girl. This is, this is the phase where you want to be in the gym lifting weights, getting in shape, getting those six-pack abs so that when you do walk in the club six months from now with a nice tailored suit, girls will notice your body. She's going to be more compelled to want to approach you, okay, and, talk, and start a conversation with you rather than you just running around the club doing these cold approaches on, on uh, women that you may not even be interested in. Okay, does that make sense? So this is the phase where uh, you're going to the dentist and, and you're fixing your teeth, get a nice million dollar smile. This is the phase where uh, you're going to be saving up to, to get a newer car or a brand new car or putting bigger rims on your car or getting a better stereo system. This is, this is just all about creating a lifestyle that's naturally attractive to beautiful women. But then again, there's also a phase before this because before you can create that type of lifestyle you need to actually know what you're looking for and here is the actual beginning phase of human courtship that's never been told to you before I'm gonna write TMA right here and that stands for target market assessment okay Target market assessment is basically figuring out who you're actually attracted to. What kind of women do you want? And, and not, uh, not just blondes and brunettes. We're talking about what kind of girls do you really want to be with? Now, let me, let me discuss this briefly. For example, most guys, you ask, a, you ask a guy, what do you want in a woman? You know, what kind of woman do you see yourself with? They're like... Most guys are clueless. They're like, uh, hot. Uh, like, can you be a little more specific? Uh, tits, uh, ass. Okay. They don't have a fucking clue. And that's one of the biggest problems with, uh, with you guys out there is, is that you don't know what you want. So when you go to the club, you just start talking to anyone and you end up being with a woman who you wouldn't necessarily choose if you had thought about it previously. You know, most guys will just go with uh, whatever girl is responding to their approach and in the end that doesn't lead for a really fulfilling relationship. Okay, so for example, I had a student of mine, Mexican guy, okay, so what kind of girls do you want? After a while, he figures out, well, he only wants to date hot Latino girls. Okay, fair enough. 
So where are you going out, sarging, trying to find these hot Latino girls? So he's like, well, I go to, you know, Pure Nightclub at the Caesars. Uh, this is back when it was Pure. It's now called Omnia. So I said, well, that's great. That is a great place to go if you want to meet hot, blonde, 22-year-old, 23-year-old college girls. Perfect. Not the place you want to meet hot Latino girls. Now, if you want to meet hot Latino girls in Las Vegas, then you want to go to Crown Nightclub on Thursday night because that's Latin night, okay, where they have salsa dancing. That's going to be a place where you're going to meet hot Latino girls in abundance. There's going to be a whole bunch of hot Latino girls right there in one location. You don't have to like go to Pure and find the one-off Latino girl amongst a bunch of white girls. Does that make sense? I had another student. Uh, he was a lawyer. Turns out he has a fetish for hot raver girls. Okay, fair enough. Uh, are you a raver? He says, no. Do you listen to EDM? Says, no, what's EDM? I'm like, oh, fuck, bro. Like, okay, like, he doesn't know what electronic dance music is. Do you know who Tiesto is? He's like, oh, I think he's like a DJ or something. Do you know any of his songs? Do you know who Dead Mouse is? Have you, do you know what Electric Daisy Carnival is? Do you know what it's about? Do you know the culture of, of rave? So this guy's fucking clueless. He doesn't have a clue. I said, okay, well, why would a hot raver girl who is involved with that culture want to date you if you don't know anything about her or her lifestyle? You don't know anything about her music. You don't, you obviously wouldn't fit in with her group of friends. And he's like, oh, shit. So it's important because this guy now finally realizes, okay, I want that type of girl, but he's not living the type of lifestyle to attract that type of girl. So if this guy, let's say he moves from here uh, into the attraction phase and tries to talk to a hot raver girl, why would she want him? Okay, he's this nerdy lawyer who has absolutely nothing in common with her. She's not going to be attracted. She's not going to be comfortable with these guys. He, he, sex will never occur. This relationship is doomed before it even happens. So, again, these, these pickup gurus, they just would tell this guy, uh, the lawyer, well, just start opening sets. Let's go to the club, start opening sets. But... but he wants hot raver girls. He's not going to get a hot raver girl until he actually understands her culture. You know, so I, basically when I was coaching this guy, we had, I had to get him on YouTube. I had to start basically saying, you have to learn this culture. You need to, when you finally get to the attraction phase, you're going to want to be talking to her about something that she's familiar with. Otherwise you're going to lose her. What are you going to, you're going to, you're going to tell her about how you were taking the bar? Like, She's going to be like, what the fuck are you talking about? You know, you can't be talking lawyer talk with the hot raver girl. So you actually have to build a lifestyle that's, that's going to be worthy of attracting the type of woman that you want. Now for the next part, let's imagine, now that you have the, the real beginning here clear, let's say that you finally figure out what type of girl that you want. Again, like, uh, you know, if you're, a, if you're a guy into like rock culture, goth type of stuff, you probably want a goth type of girl, okay? If you're a, you know, if you're a musician, you may want to date a woman who's also a musician, uh, who, who shares in your passion, anything like that. And you want to build a lifestyle that's going to be, uh, be worthy of something that she wants to join. You want to create a really fun and interesting lifestyle that, uh, that she would want to be a part of. So this game, again, is it's, it's a lot more than just picking up girls. It's a lot more than trying to get laid. It's about building a life. That's the biggest part right here. So you finally figure out what you want. You build a lifestyle to attract the woman. You then move to a point of uh, kind of meeting her halfway because now if, if you've done this correctly, and again, this, this is not something that happens overnight. This is something that could take you you know, six months, this could take you two years. If you're really out of shape, you know, and you want a girl who's really hot, why does she want you? You know, you talk about, uh, I want to date the hot the yoga instructor. 
but you are 350 pounds, why does she want you? You know, like, you're not on her level. So this, that might take you, you know, two years to lose all that weight and become uh, a very fit and very attractive guy. But I would, I would suggest to you that you take the time to do that. I would suggest to you to, to take the next couple of years and really handle your shit, you know. If you don't have the type of job that, uh, that you want, if you don't uh, have the car that you want, you're not making the type of money to support uh, a mate, you know, or a family. If you guys are trying to get relationships, you eventually want a family, you want to be the breadwinner. And, you know, if you're still a cashier at, at uh, McDonald's, that's probably not going to get you the hot stripper. Fair enough. So you might want to just take a year or two off and really handle your shit and get your life together. Like I said, this is real game. This is not uh, bullshit uh, seduction community, guru land, you know, believe in yourself and go get the girl. What I teach again is, is real game. That means solid game. Okay, and that might take a little while. I'm not talking about uh, giving you the magic pill. There's no quick fixes. I don't do gimmicks. No cheesy pickup lines. My techniques are based on science and natural human attraction. The tips and techniques that I'm teaching you and the lifestyle here is what women are really looking for in a real man. In the community, you guys have probably heard of these terms DHV, demonstrate higher value. For you guys uh, that aren't familiar with that, that's these, these gurus tell you to uh, Demonstrate higher value to the woman. You know, you talk to her in the club and you tell her that uh, you own six restaurants or something like that to make yourself, uh, to build yourself up. Well, that's great. If you want to get laid and that's, that's cool. What I rather teach is called ARV, which means acquire real value. Okay? Real value. That means take the time to, to uh, create a lifestyle, again, that's naturally attractive to women. And that's not something that happens overnight, you know. If you may not get your, your dream car within the next six months. It might take you two years. But how much better, how much tighter is your game going to be once you have uh, a much better car, bigger rims, bigger stereo, nicer stereo? How much better is your game going to be when instead of living in your mom's basement, you uh, have your own luxury condo? to bring a girl back to. So again, like I said, I'm not about, you know, quick fixes or anything. This is, this is acquire real value. After that, let's say you uh, figure out what you want in a woman. You create a lifestyle that's, that's worthy of her. You actually attract her. You build comfort with her. A mutual seduction takes place. Sex occurs. And then what? In the community, that's the end of the game. They don't tell you anything uh, about the next stage. So uh, I'm going to get into that now. What happens if uh, you're with a girl and sex stops? Why does that happen? Well, a perfect relationship will revolve a cycle of comfort and seduction. Here's what happens. You move through comfort, sex occurs. What happens next? Well, after you come, that's not the end of it. What happens in real life? You have sex, then you, maybe you cuddle for a while, then you watch a movie. That's comfort. After comfort, sex will occur again. After sex, say, let's, uh, let's go hang out, let's go watch a movie today. Or let's go to the beach. Comfort. After enough comfort, seduction. A perfect cycle. But if we take one of these away, let's say, you know, sex just kind of stops because she's losing comfort. What's going to happen next, after sex occurs, you're then going to move into a stage called relationship management.
Okay? Now, this is an entire subject on its own. If completed correctly will result in establishing a certain level of comfort again. If comfort can be maintained, seduction, sex will happen again, and we can move back into the normal cycle of a relationship. If any of these elements are left out, we're going to move back into relationship management. Okay. What happens if it just doesn't work out? You know, sometimes that happens. At that point, we move into what's called experience. Okay? Sometimes a relationship just, you're just not right for each other. You know? It happens, could be a breakup after two months, could be a divorce after ten years. Game over. It happens. Start back at the beginning. And it's okay because at this point, you will have learned something from your last relationship, which gives you a chance to uh, reassess your target market and restructure your life if needed. You know, maybe uh, you go through that relationship and you figure out, I don't really like that type of girl. I'm more into maybe this type of girl. So you want to make your uh, altercations right here, and then you can move back in to trying to attract a new target. So, let's say your next relationship, it actually works. And you get all the way through here. And what happens also with sex is, uh, you know, sex is great for pleasure and connection, you know. Some people uh, use sex for power. Some people use it for this. There's a lot of different reasons, but uh, sex ultimately is a gene mixing mechanism. The purpose of sex is for procreation. So, what will happen here is there is one final stage, which is called conception and replication. Now it is conception replication because it's technically two phases in one. Just because you get a girl pregnant doesn't mean she's actually going to have the baby. There's a lot of logistical issues here and that's another topic for another day. But this is the main purpose of a relationship. All of this is so that you can get here. See a lot of people just think this is just about banging new girls. The real point of all of this, the real point of life is this, is reproduction. The reason you are here is because your parents completed this, this puzzle, okay? And they had you. Now you have a mission in life. You have approximately 28,251 days to live, to acquire value, real value, attract a mate, and procreate before your finite lifetime expires. See, you're going to die one day. We're all going to die. I am, you are, everyone you know. And uh, if you do not uh, get this part of your life handled, and I quote, nature will unapologetically weed your genes out of existence. So picking up women is a matter of life and death. It is that serious to get this handled. So if you manage to get this far, what's going to happen here is that baby is then going to start here. What your main objective is as a parent is to raise that child, help them to become attractive, and thus ultimately create a lifestyle that is attractive to the type of partner that they want, and ultimately attract a partner and reproduce themselves, that's now your grandchildren, and just continue this cycle of life. This cycle of life has been occurring through every one of your ancestors through the last 100, 150,000 years. Every single one of them managed to get their life together and attract a partner, and now here you are. So I'm going to ask you 
what are you going to do with your life? Are you going to be the weak link who can't get this to happen and have your genes weeded out of existence? Or are you going to handle your life so that you can attract beautiful women, get this to happen, and complete your purpose on this planet? That is why you are here. I was at a concert recently. There was these two drunk, overweight girls in the elevator going up to, uh, they were, excuse me, they were going down to the, to the GA, the general, general audience where the, where the pit was for the concert. And they're drunk and they're talking. And one of the girl, I overhear her, she says, Are, you know, I'm, I'm, I definitely got to call in sick tomorrow for work. And the other girl's like, fuck it, we'll party. You know, that's why we didn't have kids. And I kind of looked at them and I was like, wow, like, they're clueless. They do not know uh, the purpose of life. Those two uh, women will ultimately have their genes weeded out of existence because they will they will never attract a mate they, and they will never reproduce. They, they're not having kids on purpose. That's like the guys who, uh, who get a vasectomy, okay? They're basically cutting off their own uh, genetic immortality. For what? Your job in life is to become, whether you're a man or a woman, is to become the best that you can be, the most attractive uh, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, to create the best lifestyle for yourself and ultimately become the best that you can become so that you can therefore attract the best. Why do we want the best? Because we want the best genetics to create stronger, healthier children so that those strong, healthy, good-looking, attractive children can thus then also attract good mates themselves and continue this cycle of life. If you, for example, mated with someone uh, who was genetically inferior, who was not that attractive, was not that healthy, you may have unhealthy, unattractive children who will ultimately not attract a mate and will not reproduce. So, overall, more than just a, a method for picking up girls, what this really is, is life. This little diagram here that I'm showing you is the answer to the age-old question, why are we here? And this is the answer. You are here to in turn make this happen. You have 28,251 days to survive, to live, to eat, sleep, and shit, and to reproduce, to mate, to procreate, to have children, to continue the cycle of your genetic immortality that's been going on since the beginning of human evolution. That's all life is. Without survival, there can be no life. And without life, there is no existence. Now, I know it probably would have been a lot better if uh, you had learned this when, uh, you know, back when you were like five years old, everything would have made more sense. Now that you've seen this, you know, something that's taken me a lifetime to figure out, I want you to take this and I want you to use it to your advantage. Take this knowledge and get out there and succeed. Become the best man that you can become so that you can ultimately attract the best woman. That's your job in life. Every day, just keep pushing forward. When you're in the gym, go 10% further. Push out that extra set. Everything you do in life, just step it up. It's time to step up your game. Because the clock is ticking. Anyway, you guys, that is my method, real game. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it uh, was informative, and I hope it uh, brings you some value. I do have a new book out. It's called 10 Steps to Success, where I talk a little bit more about this method. Uh, basically, this book focuses primarily on lifestyle mastery. 
has great tips on uh, how to make more money, how to experience ultimate health and wellness, how to create and attract better relationships into your life, and much more. And I would definitely urge you to go on to Amazon.com and uh, pick up a copy. I think it's on sale now for only $11. But I would uh, definitely urge you to pick up a copy. Uh, I think you'll love the information that I put inside this book. It's really going to help you step up your game. Anyway, guys, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a pleasure uh, sharing with you the foundation to my method. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel. You're going to find a lot more tips on dating and relationships. Just go ahead and look through my videos. Uh, look through the playlists. Go on the Ryan Johnsmith Master Pickup Artist playlist. There's some great tips in there for you guys. And there's going to be a lot more coming soon, so stay tuned. New book coming out next week too, so stay tuned for that. Alright guys, I'm out of here. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Leave your comments in the box below. And I hope to see you on the next one. Be safe. To your success, this is Ryan Johnsmith. Thank you.